When I look back on the 20 years that I've been following and paying attention to the effects pedal world, it astounds me how many pedals have been released and subsequently discontinued in such a short period of time. They run the gamut from simple dirt boxes to some of the earliest attempts of supercomputer high-tech digital effects. And these are the ones that I wish they would make again. What's going on, my friends? It's your old pal, Sean Pierce Johnson here, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos coming up soon. Now, for one reason or another, I missed out on these pedals. It could have been that I couldn't afford them, it could be that I wasn't aware of them, or the company's life cycle was at its tail end before I got into effects pedals really heavily. And with that in mind, my first two choices are actually for a very burgeoning part of the pedal market, and that is affordable gear. In some of my earliest memories of looking at guitar magazines, looking at gear catalogs for Musician's Friend or any other retailer, Arion pedals were always something that I noticed nestled in the back of the catalog. They were always incredibly low priced, but they maybe had the appearance of something that its price reflected its quality. You can imagine my surprise years later discovering how many incredible guitar players relied on the stereo chorus pedal made by Arion for their signature chorusing tones. Michael Landau had one on his pedal board for a very long time, and I've even heard that Clapton used one back in the day. I think that now is a good time for somebody to consider bringing the Arion brand back. There are a lot of people, because of nostalgia mostly, that hold Arion in a high regard. But amongst the budget pedals that I really want to see make a comeback, it has to be the Dan Electro Food Series. Now, as I was really starting to get into pedals, these were kind of like the gotta catch them all Pokemon pedals. There were so many of them, they looked so cool, and lucky for me, my uncle started playing guitar a few years after I did. So he bought up a lot of these and I got exposed to all their sounds. And for what they were, for the price, and sure, maybe they weren't the most professional of pedals that you could buy, but they sounded really good. I remember playing the Pepperoni Phaser, which was just a one knob phaser that sounded really, really good. The Slap Echo was also one that I was really fond of. And even some of the distortion ones, Fuzzes and the Black Licorice Metal, I just found it fun that there was a pedal called Black Licorice and it was a metal pedal. Now let's move out of the budget pedals and into some offerings from the bigger companies. One of the first series of pedals that I became enamored with was the Tone Lock series, or the Seven series from Ibanez. Now these were around from, I would say, about 2001 to about 2007. That's really the heyday of when I remember these being out. And I had an AW7 Ottawa and absolutely loved it. The enclosures in and of themselves were actually pretty sturdy little boxes. You could open up the foot switch and easily replace the battery and those push in knobs that went into the enclosure to prevent your settings from getting kicked around on stage was actually a really nifty idea when I look back on it. Of course, the used examples are still out there and there's even a whole group of us here in the YouTube community that love this series and want to collect them all. But I think with the advancements in manufacturing, that idea, that tone lock idea could be further refined and brought back by Ibanez in some newer, more updated, more refined designs and effect sounds. This next choice is one that I'm sure a lot of you fuzz fiends out there will want to see as well, the Boss Hyper Fuzz. Now we've gotten some cool fuzz pedals from Boss recently in the form of the Tone Bender collaboration with Sola Sound and the Wazacraft Fuzz. 
great, fantastic. I loved the tone bender. It was one of my favorite pedals of 2021. But the Hyper Fuzz is one that people have been asking Boss to reissue, just like the Space Echo that we'll be seeing later on this year, to get a reissue of, especially in a Waza Craft format, being that it'll be made in Japan and it'll have much higher quality components than anything that's made outside of Boss's Japanese facility. And I think this is doable. I don't think it's gonna be terribly hard for Boss to find the components to replicate that circuit, but I also think it's room for them to have fun and play around with the circuitry and make some of those custom improvements that the Wazacraft series is known for. But that's not the only Boss pedal that I'd like to see them bring back. If you don't know, Boss actually put out two different parametric EQ pedals back in the day, one for guitar and one for bass. Now, I love EQ pedals. They are insanely versatile, and it's parametric EQs that I feel really allow me to surgically remove and add frequencies to change up my guitar sound. And of course, the GE7 is still around, and I'm sure it will be around for many more years. But parametric EQ is a really powerful tone shaping tool, and I would love to see that idea make a comeback in this day. For my next choice, I'm going to one of the big guitar brands, Fender, as a matter of fact, and I would love to see them bring back the Fender Blender in some way, shape, or form. Now, they did reissue it several years ago, but even trying to find one of those reissue units now is very, very difficult. And the enclosure's not exactly what I would call modern pedal board friendly, but the newer Fender pedals are <laughs> fantastic, and the enclosures are much more pedal board friendly than the reissue Fender Blender. So this is what I say, Fender. Take the Fender Blender, put it in one of your newer enclosures with the light up knobs and all that stuff, modernize the circuit a little bit, and boom, there's a product. It, it's kind of a reimagining, less of a reissue, but come on. I think the, sometimes these things, these new products, they just make themselves and you don't have to think that hard. Now, personally, I don't care if anybody at the companies mentioned is listening to me. And quite frankly, I don't care if you watching agree with everything I picked, because this is all just personal to me and my experience over the last 20 years. All these things that I've chosen have been chosen because they made me feel something. I experienced something, I learned something. It helped feed a passion. It helped feed an interest that kept me on a good path and eventually led to what I do today, which I think is pretty cool, the fact that I get to talk about effects pedals for a living. However, I love keeping conversations like this going. So if you have a pedal that you would like to see reissued that I didn't mention, let me know what it was in the comment section below. It would be really fun for us to chat about what we like, what we dislike, and what made us feel something musically. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love if you would do a few things to help support the channel. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, share a link to it with a guitar playing friend, and of course, click the subscribe button below and ring the notification bell. But the best way for us to stay in touch and make sure you don't miss any videos is by subscribing to my email newsletter. You can click the card in the top right corner of the screen, enter this URL into your web browser of choice, or just click the link in the description box below. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And until we see each other next, I'm Sean Pierce Johnson wishing you watching great tone, great health, and of course, happy stomping. Cheers, friends. I'll see you in the future. God bless.